In this video, I'm going to only work out one example because of how many different substitutions that really have to be done and shown in detail to be able for you to calculate a second derivative using this implicit differentiation. All right, and I might also note that this does say find the second derivative in terms of x and y, which that's what causes you to have to do lots of substitutions after you get that first and second derivative calculated. All right, so uh, we're going to try to be very organized and very detailed here so that you can see exactly where all of the substitutions come from. And I really am going to try to keep it all on one piece of paper, if at all possible, because I think it's going to be better visual for us to see that. Okay, if I'm going to find a second derivative, I need to find the first derivative first, okay? So I'm going to calculate my first derivative right here, okay? I am doing this in um, with respect to x, okay? So let's do d dx of that x squared plus y squared equals d dx of 25. All right, so I'm going to take the derivative using implicit differentiation. All right, so um, derivative of x squared is going to be 2x plus derivative of that y squared is going to be a 2y y prime. And I do use the prime notation as opposed to the dy over dx notation. All right, same thing if your teacher does dy over dx right there. It's just a different um, form or notation form of my derivative right there equals 0 for the derivative of 25. Okay, now I'm going to go through here, continue with the implicit differentiation, so subtract 2x from both sides of my equation. 2y, y prime equals a negative 2x. I'm going to divide both sides by that 2y, so y prime equals a negative 2x over a 2y. All right, then I've got some canceling going on here that's going to let that first derivative be negative x over y. All right, so right there is my first derivative. Okay, now we're going to go to the second derivative. So second derivative. All right, again, I'm going to have implicit differentiation. I'm going to be calculating it on this right here. So I'm going to have uh, d dx of the negative x over y. Let's keep going up because I want you to be able to see this. Okay, so this is going to be um, a quotient rule. So we've got the bottom times the derivative of the top minus, all right, the top, which is a negative x, times the derivative of the bottom, which is going to be a y prime, all over a y squared. All right, now if I attempt to clean this up here a little bit, this is going to be a minus y. This will make this a positive right there. So then I'm going to have a negative y plus x y prime all over a y squared. Now in and of itself, right there, that second derivative by itself wasn't too bad. Okay, but this derivative right here is not in terms of x and y, which is what the direction said to do, because I've got this y prime that is setting here. Okay, so let's box this in being our second derivative. All right, now I've got to do some substitutions to be able to get it in terms of just x and y. Okay, so let's come up here. I don't know what color I want to use at this point. Let's come up here to do this. Um, let's write down substitute substitute for y prime. All right. And so I'm going to bring this answer all the way up here, and I'm actually probably going to do some rewriting here. Okay. Now, if I'm going to substitute for y prime. All right, we had originally said that my y prime was negative x over y. So I'm going to write that down. y prime is negative x over y. Okay, so we got to remember that because that's the part I'm going to substitute. Okay, now let's pull this derivative up as it sits exactly. So negative y plus x y prime all over a y squared. All right, now I'm going to do the substitution. This y prime, I'm going to substitute in what that first derivative is, negative x over y. So negative y plus x, 
do the substitution, negative x over y, all over y squared. Okay, now go ahead and uh, let's clean that up a little bit. So negative y, and let's just go ahead and go, uh, doesn't really make any difference, minus an x squared over a y all over a y squared. All right, I want to multiply through by the least common denominator because what I have going on here is a complex fraction, and I don't want a complex fraction, so let's get rid of the complex fraction. All right, I'm going to multiply through by the least common denominator, which is a y, so I'm going to multiply by y, and I'm going to multiply by y. Okay, that's going to simplify what I have down to a negative y squared minus the y's will cancel, x squared, and then on the bottom, I'm just going to have a y to the third. All right. Um, now, at this point, okay, I am in terms of x and y, but I can do more, another substitution, and I can clean it up a little bit, and I can get even better than this. All right. If I take a look at what I've got right here, I've got a, an, a y squared and an x squared. Okay, but originally, my original equation had an x squared plus a y squared equals 25. Okay, so now, what can I do? All right, I could pull a negative out of the top right here to do some simplifying. If I pull a negative out of the top, then I could rewrite that as an x squared plus a y squared all over a y to the third. All right, well, then now I've got an x squared plus y squared, but I already know from the original equation that x squared plus y squared is 25. All right, so let's substitute from original problem. Okay, so originally I was given x squared plus y squared equals 25. All right, so that was given to me as the original problem. I'm gonna go ahead and box that in orange so it stands out a little bit. All right, and then now what am I gonna do? I'm gonna rewrite this right here. Actually, I probably need to put a bo box around that. I'm going to, because that was my answer from substituting from y prime, I'm going to take that, rewrite down here. All right, so negative x squared plus y squared all over y to the third. Okay, and my substitution then, I'm going to take this and substitute for 25. So I can get a negative 25 over y to the third. Okay, and that then is going to be the final answer. All right, a lot of work, a lot of substitutions, but as long as you stay organized and you know what you're doing and when you're doing it and when you're supposed to be doing things, then it's not too bad. You calculate your first derivative, you calculate your second derivative, and then stop, take a look at it. If it's got a y prime in there and you need the derivative in terms of x and y, then you're going to substitute from whatever you calculated that first derivative from all right, and then you, a lot of times you can just stop there. That is in terms of x and y, okay? But it is usually very, very common if you can make a substitution from that original equation, all right, with maybe just a little simple um, algebra notation, you're definitely gonna wanna do that. So that's what we did here. We substituted from our original problem and we got it down to a really, really nice second derivative there. All right, so um, just one example of using calculating that second derivative when you've got implicit differentiation involved. Definitely thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.